today is August 7th, and we're rapidly approaching D-Day. Also, more news in this weird live format. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You have to clarify, you're not talking about the invasion of Normandy. No, no. <laughs> I, have, I have wedding stuff on the I've got projects i got to finish. I, I, you know what? I know your wedding is a big event in your life. But other people, maybe not. But comparing it to the loss of life that was the taking of the beaches of Normandy, maybe a little tone deaf no, for some people. I think it's fine. Eh, okay. We'll go with it then. <laughs> And another thing that we'll go with so this divorce day. is uh, is yeah. an update to one of our stories from last week when we talked about yeah. DoorDash and their tipping scheme. So a lot of people got upset about that, and, and DoorDash pretty much didn't have any options. Uh, DoorDash tip scheming scheme prompts class action lawsuits seeking all those tips that didn't go to drivers. Reading this story made me very angry. I didn't realize that they were that ballsy about taking the tips. It wasn't like, like they guaranteed drivers made at least $8 an hour. So, I mean, I guess that's good. But if you bought, say, like a $50 meal and you uh, tipped $20 and it took an hour to deliver that meal, you would only get $12 extra. You realize that's not super uncommon in the restaurant business. That's crazy. It's well, garbage. Like, you still have to pay, like usually you get 3 or $4 an hour. There's some minimum. It's not zero. Yeah, well... It, it, they didn't have that guarantee. Well, I mean, they did have the guarantee. Actually, they had more of a guarantee, but I think it probably ended up costing more in the end because, yeah. you know, they talk about... Uh, did well, I put this story in about online tipping? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, I was I reading uh, statistically, a lot of people are... Of course, this is probably self-reporting, and people might be lying about it because <laughs> the drivers are the ones that said tipping was the biggest problem. But the people reported like 79% said they had a no problem tipping 15 or 20%. Yeah. So. Well, it usually gives you a recommendation. So I mean, it's, it's not <sighs> even hard. For me, it's more just like I don't want to bother sitting here doing the math and it's already printed here on well, the receipt. It, so. it literally also says 100% of your tip goes to the driver, which any which normal person, well, I mean, eh, any per- normal person would think that means that above whatever they're being paid to do the service. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's uh, funny. Some DoorDash people suspected this. And they t- contacted this uh, reporter. I don't think it was a Gizmodo r- reporter, but it was so, some reporter. So he actually drove DoorDash for a couple of days <laughs> and measured it. And uh, I think he actually talked to the people he delivered to. And he was like, hey, you know, I'm doing this. Tell me what. And figured it out. Yeah. Nice. They're keeping it. Uh, this guy, the, it wasn't the story like the driver that filed the class action lawsuit might have been an actor. They're trying to figure that out. I thought that, that was mentioned in here too. DoorDash. Declined to comment on this story. <laughs> I wonder why. Hmm. But they have confirmed that they're not going to do that anymore. So probably hurt their bottom line. Oh, uh, <clears throat> so I didn't understand this at all. Well, that's because they changed this headline. I'm pretty sure they changed this headline. When I first read the story, it was not about. If you read the story, it's the same story. But the headline used to be, uh, "Hey, remember that settlement that Elon Musk made with?" Uh, the FTC? About tweeting? About tweeting? Yeah. You do not tweet any unapproved tweets, especially about production numbers. Never production numbers. Guess what he did? Elon Musk says Tesla's ramping up solar roof production. But then the article goes on to talk about how nobody's buying solar roofs, so why are they doing this? So some of those... It's funny because um, the Tesla argument is almost as bad as red versus blue. Yeah. Like... The short sellers and the trolls, and then you've got the diehard Tesla people, and you have no idea who to trust. Look, if I can get a Tesla solar roof on discount because they made too many on eBay for like half off or whatever, even if I can't install it, I'll just put it in my garage until I can get somebody to install it. Because no, there's going to be a lot of bees nests in that. <laughs> bees, so you're telling me I get free honey and solar? <laughs> Not those kind of bees. <laughs> So I don't know if they've followed up with this, but this is a very clear violation of that agreement and uh, it's got to be just up to the FTC how you know pissy they want to be about it but one of those short sellers or one of the you know activist investors or whatever put out a huge story about how the solar section was failing um, incredibly so of course Musk couldn't just sit still for that yeah he had to respond well let's not the article goes out of its way to mention you know let's not forget that Tesla bought solar city 
acquiring all of its debt. And the, the article made it sound like they didn't even try to try to negotiate down Solar City's debts, which any kind of acquisition like that, you'd want to do that. And that was another thing that I wanted to research to find out if they actually did. If they actually did negotiate down the debt when they acquired Solar City, then this article's misleading. And if they didn't negotiate down the debt when they acquired Solar City, they're dumb. There was also an article. I didn't include it because it's not been confirmed by anybody except this. Was it uh, Norwegian Commerce Department or something like that? But some guy bought a Tesla. And after 2,000 miles, or maybe it was 2,000 kilometers, probably kilometers. Yeah, whatever. It was Moon unit. like the, the doors and the back fender and everything and the front bumper were just shredded with uh, <laughs> pock marks from rocks. And he's like, I've been driving this on these European roads that are really good. How can this be true? So in that country, and again, I don't know which country it was, you can actually go to the Commerce Department and like, I want you to test this for against the standards. Mm. The paint was way below standard <laughs> in both thickness and uh, softness. It was mm. very soft paint. Hmm. So Neat. Maybe cutting some corners? I don't know. Could be another troll. <laughs> but that's not all that Elon Musk had to say. No, I thought this was good news. And yeah, I guess. Right. I, but I, I wonder, uh, do you get the mobile plan with the car? No, I think that's extra. No, but I mean, do you have to get it through Tesla to do this, or can you hotspot? Uh, I think you have to get it through Tesla. Tesla has to maintain the connection. So they're going to make money from this. Probably. Yeah. Elon Musk says that Tesla's will soon be able to saf- safely stream Netflix and YouTube. So, soon. Yeah. On their console. So it only works when the cars in park, and like the games that are on there, you can control the games from the steering wheel and the pedals when the car is not in motion. What could possibly go wrong? You know, one of the games is Cuphead. Remember how insanely difficult Cuphead was? It would be terrible in a car. What a horrible experience. Well, I imagine it's just uh, four sets of buttons on each side of the steering wheel, right? But it would still be uncomfortable, I think, and very rage-inducing. A lot of questions about safety in the chat right now, and I would say... No, it has to be sitting still. It has to be sitting still. Although, he did mention something about self-driving. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes you think that when it's gets cleared for fully self-driving again i don't think the lawyers would ever clear that because <laughs> they are so far away from self uh, fully uh, self-driving enough that you can watch netflix <clears throat> is five plus years away because there was that one guy who died and they claim he was watching a movie yeah on a laptop yeah. and uh tesla actually i think they kind of hid behind that they were like well you listen you should never be doing that till we sell it to you and then it's different but uh I'm sure they ha- they do have really cool speaker systems, so uh, that could be nice, you know, like immersive audio. I think this is going to go down as like the most expensive thing a C level executive has ever said. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> we know that IBM is uh, an aging company, and it's very much not considered hip and cool, right? So if you're at IBM, you want that to change, but how do you go about it? What do you do? And uh, this. Uh, Human Resources Vice President had a very, very unique answer to that question. Former uh, Human Resources VP says IBM wanted to look cool to millennials and fired 100,000 workers. I feel like this is like the opposite of what any millennial would think was cool. Because it just shows you have no job security there. Like, why would you ever want to invest in a company like this? Like your time and energy and, you know, as a job. They really yeeted out those old people, didn't they? They really did. Definitely not. them straight out. (laughs) Definitely not that we're going through stories too quickly, but I read a really amazing blog post from a guy that was working at IBM, and he was like a younger, hip guy. It sounded like he knew what he was doing. And he was working on Hercules, which is like a mainframe emulator. But IBM really doesn't like Hercules, like, a lot. And, uh... Like, the people that did Hercules tried to offer commercial support for it in Europe, and IBM shut that down with a lawsuit. Because IBM, or that kind of thing is usually more friendly in the European Union because they're trying to maintain old stuff. But <coughs> IBM had this software that would scan personal devices for bad software, and he got written up for having the Hercules emulator on his laptop because he wanted to take the initiative to learn more about the mainframes and stuff that he would be working on, like, through the emulator. And it's like, I can't, you know... It's like one of the things he said was like, uh, you know, it's like I, the, the, the Watson guy was looking down his neck. He's like, you scofflaw. What, what are you doing with this emulation thing? No, we must maintain our proprietary monopoly. And it's like that. Internally, that signals a huge cultural problem at IBM that firing old people, not going to fix. You know what people really like? Good pay. Yeah. Benefits. Yeah. Vacation time. Yeah, shareholders don't necessarily like that. Uh, 
the uh, the other thing about it is IBM wanted to do that big transition to the cloud, and a big part of that was that Jedi contract, <laughs> which Jeff Bezos slipped in and snatched out of their hands. So, well, I mean, would you rather work for Amazon on the Jedi contract or at IBM working on <clears throat> mainframes? You think Amazon's uh, programming department is anything like the warehouse? Because that could affect my decision. They're probably a lot alike, as it turns out. <laughs> How many times a day can I pee? Is it? Uh, <laughs> that would be that would be a cool video. Like, Put that negotiations out. on any job. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, at Google you're treated like royalty, or maybe that's not true. And then on a scale of like Google to Amazon warehouse worker, exactly where does IBM and Amazon lie? Like maybe we can turn that into a uh, a standard that would show up on job placement sites. Like. Rate this. It would have to be a three-dimensional graph, though. Yeah. Because then you have to take in the woke aspect. Because <laughs> I wouldn't want to be at Google for that reason. No matter uh, how good the rest of it is. Everybody's too woke. And I think at IBM, that might be a little too unwoke. Because <laughs> they're just, again, yeeting you out. <laughs> I'm laughing so hard, it feels like I'm having a seizure. <laughs> it's like uh, when those, back when we had MTV, back in the old days, some of you don't know about, when those... Uh, VJs hit a certain age, you just didn't see them anymore. It's like, oh, where did Jenny McCarthy go? <clears throat> Lyft. Is that where she came from? I actually didn't know that. No, she she was Playboy. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. But she did a. Uh, I know her only as the anti-vax lady. She did a game show on oh. MTV, and then they gave her a comedy show, when she just she thought that making funny faces made her funny. Oh, well, that probably did work when she was at Playboy. Why was she still hot? I mean, yeah. Like, even making stupid faces, <laughs> you couldn't really tone that down. Anyway, you know what the the crazy thing about it is? She did get super funny when she went all, like, crazy anti-vax. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was the medication talking, and it was the wrong dosage. Wouldn't that be a little hypocritical if you're yeah. anti-vaxing your kid but taking your happy pills? Uh, okay, Lyft. We talked about uh, the scooters last week. Were those Lyft scooters? Uh, no, I, I think remember. it was the e-bike one, the uh, uh, e-something. Oh. No, no, there were scooters. But people were just jumping in front of traffic in these scooters. There have been like four deaths in one city. So they were like, you know what? Maybe the scooter program goes on hold because people are a little too uh, risky with these things. Still in the call of the void. And they also now, caught fire. No, these are the bikes. Oh, these are the bikes. Mm-hmm. I'm juxtaposing here. Okay. Yeah, look, you ruined it. Now. Oh, no. Lyft halts San Francisco e-bike program after bicycles catch fire. This isn't the first one to catch fire. Looks like a lithium-ion fire to me, dot, dot, dot. In the charger, no less. So, yeah. That, that is a safety circuit that failed to operate properly. Look at these sweet pink rims. I do kind of like that, actually. <laughs> Enough like, to hop on one of those? Oh, uh, Bird. Bird was the other one, wasn't it? Oh, was that the scooters? Yeah. Because like people would just toss them in the river or something when they were. Dying. No, that was a different story. Oh. That was one where they fished them all out of the river. This one was about um, there those motorized scooters. It might be the same company, but they're super powerful. Oh, and you could hack them and then. No, you didn't have to hack them. They were like really fast, and people couldn't really control them very well, <laughs> and they were just getting run over left and right and running into shit. So. I, well, I got to say, I think this approach is better. Where like when you get to your destination, <laughs> you got to shove it in a charging station, otherwise you get charged for the bike. Now you throw like that the in the river. These kind of things, but that's going to cause some damage throwing that in the river. Yeah. Although the scooter is probably the same way. So, all these like alternative transport things. I don't know if the U.S. is ready. No. Yeah. We're, we're just not that kind of. Thing. We're, we're not ready for face masks when people are sick. We're definitely not ready for these things. Remember Apple when they said, uh, "Oh, by the way, we're real sorry about this, but we've been listening to you have sex." And deal drugs. Last week, yeah. And fight with your significant other. Well, they've uh, they've made some changes. Good news. <laughs> Apple stops letting contractors, put special emphasis on the word contractors, listen to Siri voice recordings and will offer an opt-out later. Again, emphasis on the contractors and later part. So, yeah. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here, but didn't Tim Cook make a big deal about privacy and the FBI and turning things over and the device encryption and... And it was recordings that they wanted. Yeah. Or no, no, they wanted access to the phone. It was Amazon. They wanted everything. They wouldn't turn over uh, yeah. the Alexa recordings. And then we found out the same thing about Alexa. Well, now, in the end, the court did order them to turn over the recordings, and they did. So, but if you can mine that sweet, sweet data, all that goes out the window. Because that's super valuable. Can I just turn that off by default? Not yet. 
you got to wait. And then it'll probably be hidden away in, you know, 15 menus. And most people will never even think about it. And then when they buy a new phone every year, they'll have to remember to do it again. Mm -hmm. And they won't. Well, it seems like we've moved into security. We don't really know. It's just a potpourri. It's a beautiful surprise day. So this is an interesting story about the Middle East. And it's funny because we see a lot of this kind of hacking in the <laughs> Middle East. And this is a very destructive kind of hacking. A newly discovered hacking group is targeting energy and telecoms companies. They, that was the name. Uh, Dragos. That's the security company. Uh, Hexane. Yeah, yeah. So Hexane is a new one, they assume. That sounds like five eyes plus one. So they're trying to get into the telecoms and through the telecoms get into the energy infrastructure. And from there, who knows what we're going to do. So this actually... Remember when we learned that like the NSA and other intelligence, like other five eyes intelligence agencies, so you know we're talking the UK and Australia and all those places, uh, were tapping the communications lines. So like Google goes to let's say AT and T, because you know AT. We were just talking about AT and T. You should know who AT and T is. They go to AT and T and they don't say I want an internet connection. They say hey, you've got service from you know uh, San Francisco to Portland, and we've got you know, data centers in both of those places. We want a private circuit from here to there on your network. It's not connected to the internet, it's just a point-to-point -point pipe. A lot of these intelligence agencies figured that getting into the internal infrastructure at Google was as easy as tapping that. So now Google encrypts that. But like everything, Google is way ahead of everybody. Most companies are way behind that. There's a lot of industrial and manufacturring companies that have those same kinds of point-to-point -point circuits. Sometimes they're encapsulated over the internet. Sometimes they are literally sold a point-to-point -point wire but the reality is all this is done in software now. So it's really easy if you've got control of the telecom to spy on traffic that is not on the internet. And so that's a really, really scary time to be alive. Yep. Especially when the old uh, fuel refinery blows up. Yeah. And it's like, how do, they came from inside the walls. And it's like, well, no, not really. Most of the, those companies, their IT people, don't even know to think about that because they're thinking, like, they've got a private pipe. They ran their own wire. How did they break in? They don't even know they're vulnerable in that way. I kind of think that the Iranian IT people know. Yeah. On some level, they're like, okay, we probably should be a little bit more careful here. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not trust anybody. And don't trust anybody is a good rule to live by when you're talking about mobile apps. Because you might think that your favorite mobile app is your bro and it's taking care of you and it's giving you that encryption. But remember who owns it. Calls for backdoor access to WhatsApp as Five Eyes Nations meet. So, again, those superpowers are trying to get together and figure out a way that they can have mandatory backdoor encryption. Our attorney general in the U.S. is apparently dumber than a stump because he thinks that they can have nah, some type of backdoor access. He doesn't. No, that remember his, <laughs> uh, it was the FBI director who said we could have both. Yeah. Barr's way of coming at it was like, listen, it's more important than your privacy. We're just yeah. going to do it. Yeah. So it's like, I don't care if it's you like, can't have both. Wait, the government is allowed to have encryption that the citizen is not? That's... Oh, uh, what else is that like? Yeah. <laughs> Capital One. Oh, man. I'm a Capital One customer. Yeah, And it's too. funny because it's like, oh, I'll go onto the Capital One website and find out if I was affected. They don't tell you. Mm. They're saying, oh, well, maybe eventually we'll tell you. But for right now... Just don't uh, think about don't it. Don't worry about it. Just yeah. monitor your credit. Right? Uh, the actual email... That they were sending out, which I did not get, by the way, even though they have my, yeah. they have, they definitely have my email, the bastards. But uh, the headline in the email was literally, "Don't worry, your social security numbers and account numbers are safe, except." And the first bullet point was like, "Ever how many millions of social security numbers, and then ever how many millions of account numbers." So it's like, except for ninety percent of our users. Fortunately, yeah. most of them were Canadian. Yeah. So that doesn't matter. Uh, and right. also, a lot of other companies were affected. <laughs> Well, this, there was, they tracked this down to one individual who uh, hacked in and got all this stuff and really was not smart about it and got caught. Maybe but, it had mental issues. You're not allowed to say that. Oh. But uh, they went in and looked back through the Slack conversations that this person had and they uh, found out something disturbing. I'm not going to... 
Capital One breach also hit other major companies, say researchers. <laughs> Why aren't you going to read it? No, no, I mean, I, was, I thought you were going to, you wanted me to say what they found on the, oh, you're talking other about companies. the other companies. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the, the we're not allowed really to talk about that. Now. <laughs> so there was stuff, there was stuff in the Slack chat other than the other companies that were affected, so. That was obvious from the pictures. I don't think we needed the Slack chat to track that down. Yeah. But yeah, it turned out that this person had access to a number of companies. Uh, it gave a short list, didn't it? Vodafone, Ford, Michigan State University, the Ohio Ooh. Department of Transportation. Ooh. University of Michigan. Or no, I'm sorry. Michigan State University. My bad. Yeah. So bad news if you're involved in all of those. How many people you think are like the hit all five of those? Mm. Born in Ohio. Faces that statue right now. Born in Ohio, went to MSU, drives a Ford because Michigan, right? And then just got a new Vodafone account and a Capital One card. Oh, they're so screwed. <laughs> That's going to be like five hits on Troy Hunt's Have I Been Pwned. <laughs> so bad news. And once again, we're not sure yet. Just have to wait because you can't figure out if you're affected. Mm. Our next headline also makes me have little faith in Tim Cook. Mm. So iPhones, we've recently seen a lot of weird behavior with AirDrop. Because people are using AirDrop to drop, you know, unsavory things in public places. But also the Hong Kong protesters are using AirDrop to get around all of the uh, restrictions, which is interesting. You know, it's kind of like, oh, that's a cool thing about it. But really bad news for those protesters. iPhone Bluetooth traffic leaks phone numbers in certain scenarios. The Apple bug might accidentally help catch people behind the recent malicious AirDrop file sharing epidemic. So... I was trying to understand what happens here, and it looks like in the Bluetooth protocol packets, some of the packets, not all of the packets, have a hash of the phone number. But it turns out that the space for all possible phone numbers is actually very tiny compared to all possible hashes. So even though you've only got like the first three characters of a hash, it is trivial to reverse that into a phone number that will generate that hash. Well, you just build your own yeah. hash table, yeah, making all phone numbers, which again, that's not hard to do. Yep. Just iteration and yeah. knowing the, the codes and, and you know where well, they go. You, you don't have to do it brute force. Like you know what the area codes are going to be and you know the prefixes because not all area codes and prefixes are used. And that is a fraction of all possible phone numbers if it's just, you know, 10 million numbers or and 100 million numbers or whatever. As soon as somebody does that, it's going to be put on a form somewhere. It's probably already been generated. Like yeah. the, the Teslas that we have <laughs> could do that in about 10 minutes. So, I mean, not a big deal. So, yeah, bad news. Maybe, uh, bad, man. but more importantly, if you have somebody working on security that understood enough to like hash the phone number, but didn't understand that would happen, those are not like that. There's no security auditing or review going on inside of Apple. None. Why would anybody ever want to track down an innocent little airdrop? I mean, it's all about sharing. <coughs> right? Who sent that dick pic on the plane? I think this is a repeat, isn't it? No, there was, uh, this is about the man in the middle. Yeah. This yeah, is yeah. slightly different. And again, no developers at Apple are actually doing security audits. Apple's AWDL protocol has been plagued by flaws that enable tracking and man-in-the-middle attacks. So Apple patched a bug in mid-May, but academics say the rest of the flaws require a redesign of some Apple services. So these services are fundamentally broken from a security standpoint. So this included the Bluetooth bug, but also uh, man-in-the-middle hijacking of... AirDrop and uh, AirPlay. I think web traffic got in there too, right? Uh, some kinds of web traffic in certain scenarios, yeah. Yeah, so. <clears throat> Bad news. That is terrible, Apple. I mean, it's like, <clears throat> this is like amateur hour stuff too, which is scary. A lot of people, if you're going to airdrop those nudes, you got to be careful. You got to, here's, here's an engagement challenge. Do you think that the situation will be better or worse? Like, these security issues really should have been discovered a long time ago. Do you think they've gone so long without being detected because it's a closed ecosystem and it's hard to like peek behind the curtain because of all of Apple's stuff? Probably. And also probably because only recently have we gotten contentious airdrops. <laughs> you know, people have figured out that... And troll's going to troll. That's a good mm -hmm. avenue for dick pics, yeah. So now we have unwanted airdrops. And then you th the Chinese government probably did a little work on that. <laughs> uh so as an entitled American, I don't know a lot that's going on in other governments. And I didn't know about this story. So apparently in Australia, there was fake news that the Labor Party was going to introduce a death tax. 
which we you know a death tax is something a lot of people don't want. It kind of flies in the face of capitalism and family. You know, it's collectivism. So Australia's a little bit upset because they feel like Facebook should have done more about it. Facebook says, bro, that ain't my job. Facebook says it was not our role to remove fake news during the Australian election. This sounds very different than what they've told American lawmakers. <laughs> I can't, I mean, yeah. I can't put my finger well, on it. But. Remember when they had the... Uh, <clears throat> the anti-Trump war room, the anti-Russian war room during the election. And it was like, yeah, we're going we're gonna to make sure that nobody messes with anything. I mean, how is this different than Russian hackers exactly? They don't care about this. Maybe this is another engagement challenge. Like, if you saw this, that they were going to bring in death taxes, would that? Now, here's, I will say that um, in their defense, they said that it wasn't their place to interpret an argument between two political parties, right? Mm. So it could be that there is something like a death tax that they don't call a death tax. And they're like, no, it's wrong to call it a death tax. I don't know enough about the Australian election. Yeah. So maybe it's something like that. And maybe Facebook is right to not get involved. This one, I actually did try to find other sources for this. And it's a mess. Like, I mean, I, there's, it, it, there was like, you know, Tom's blog post on this seemed more credibly written than some of the major Australian news outlets. Oh, yeah. You've never seen that before? Yeah. <laughs> did you put this in there? I did not. I, I don't know how this either. got in there because this is not robot. See, I, I saw this and I, I'll be honest, I just kind of skimmed over because like Wendell will want to talk about this. Is I assumed you But put somehow this got in the robot section and it must have just been, you know, my heat stroke haze <laughs> well, you just put it in <laughs> valve proposes game friendly changes to the linux kernel a zdnet talks about this so um the linux kernel does not have a facility for managing um things the way that windows does exactly in a one-to-one -one way the, the linux emulation of what windows does has kind of a lot of overhead but a minor relatively minor patch to the linux kernel would fix this i actually read the mailing list uh traffic on this and the first reply to it was like, nub, you formatted the patch wrong, and this shouldn't be indented this way, and you shouldn't comment this way. And, and it was like super abrasive. Are but, you saying but really, that the Linux community is super toxic? That wasn't toxic, <laughs> but it was just no. like... Abrasive, maybe? Well, maybe that's the reason work. they can't have nice things? But uh, it's, I mean, on the one hand, it's amazing that their code standards are that insane when it's just like, ah, we're kind of thinking about this, maybe. But on the other hand, this will be good. I um, think it's a little defeatist that the way we're going to fix it is to still emulate the other thing. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, that was supposed to be the transition to robot. Do we want to take another break? Yes. Let's, let's take that. a break. I need to stretch my leggies. Because I need some water. <sighs> 